like, why are you talking to so-and-so? Don't talk to so many guys. And like, yo, yo, I'm used to different men coming inside the house. How you going to tell me that? I've been in a situation back then, back then, when I was dating a young lady. She told her mom that. Let go. Okay, we are back with another discussion at the Mr. Knowles organization. By now, if you guys don't know who I am, uh, I don't know what to tell you. Um, all jokes time, my name is Hernal. Um, I am the founder of the Miss Knowles organization. And joining me today, oh my God, wait, where's my the most Hernal? Um, I am the founder of the Miss Knowles organization. Keep it, trying to touch my remote. Joining us today, I think this is her first time. Second. Or second, sorry. Second. For the ladies uh, who are his accent, we have another, we have a woman on the board, but she's a very busy young lady. As y'all can see, uh, get a close up uh, 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 on the. She she a businesswoman, so that's a business. Bella Natural. Beauty. A beauty. Sorry, uh, you know she always uh, doing her uh, work in and doing business. So today she finally was able to grace us with her presence. Uh, I let her introduce herself. Hey guys. Hi everyone. My name is Sandy. Um, I am one of the board members here at the Mr. Knowles organization. Um, I'm the only female as of right now, but we're working on that. God is faithful, so he won't, you know. All right, too much time. And yeah. And you know, <laughs> we got Mr. Uh, he not new. Mr. You, you got the merch with it too. Get a close up on that. <laughs> Mr. Green Light. Mr. Green Light. Mr. Green Light. Look, the waves. Oh my God. <laughs> look, 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 he put his head down just a so no, no. Okay, okay. But today we uh, we got another discussion. We're gonna be talking about accountability. You know, uh, this is this is one of my favorite topics because there's a lot of characteristics and there's a lot of things that could uh, uh, contribute to a success. But I believe um, outside of like discipline. One of the greatest things that can help someone be successful is accountability. Because sometimes it's not that we don't know, it's just that, you know, sometimes we tend to forget or we do what we want. But if we have accountability, then that's the only way we can stick to what we say and do what we gotta do. Yeah. So we're going to go with the verse um, that really highlights the importance of accountability. And you can find this verse in Ecclesiastes um, chapter 4, verse starting at 9. It says, um, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him off. Okay. So before I, I start, what what do you oh. have to say about this? Or what do you think about like this verse or accountability in general? How important is accountability to you when it comes to success? I think that accountability is very important um, when it comes to success. Um, because in life, you need somebody to check you when you're wrong sometimes. Okay, sometimes you need somebody to tell you how it is um, because, you know, nobody, everybody don't want to hurt your feelings, you know, everybody don't want to hurt your feelings, everybody is going to tell you sometimes what you want to hear and that's not always the best, um, best case, especially in business. That's it. That's it. Um, you said something. Um, you said basically a lot of times, like our friends or people that's close to us, they normally tell us like what we want to hear. Mm -hmm. But you say an accountability is not just telling the person what they want to hear, but it's also like keeping it basically real, even though keeping it real might hurt. Might hurt. Yeah. Um, but my question to you is, do you think most people are ready for that? Like. Like, uh -huh. yeah. no, I feel like no, but I feel like some sometimes two people get get it mixed up because it's like they want someone to hold um, them accountable, but they don't have self accountability. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that is a, you know, a mistake, you know, that happens you know, in today's society. Uh, okay, because that's a, we're gonna go there. But I want to focus more on the like a lot of times like we don't have. I, I believe. 
or what I've seen, uh, we don't keep each other accountable, one, because we're not trying to hurt each other's feelings or we're not trying to like, you know, like mess up the vibe. But that is because a lot of time when we did try to keep it real, you know, people felt some type of weight. So it's like, on the topic of accountability, I think for us to be able to be accountable for each other, we have to welcome accountability. And if we welcome accountability, we know that comes with criticism. Like, yo, if you mess up, you mess up. Now, how you choose to say it, it does play a role. So, especially somebody, you criticize somebody, you want to say it in a way where it's like not too harsh. But accountability comes with criticism. So, and I feel like because, and this could be another topic for another day. In our community, we have such like a high level of pride that when someone do come and quote unquote people say check us, um, even though they don't, when you use the word someone check you, you don't sound good. Mm. So I'll say when somebody do like come and um, confront you, it's like our pride get like, you know, like, mm. and we just think it's men, but nowadays, you know, our women, you know, women got their pride too. Like, so you can speak on that. Like, how do you feel like when, when it comes as a woman, like, how do you, how do you see that other women or yourself have handled when quote unquote you guys being checked or confronted? Um, I feel like because as women we're like, you know, very emotional beings. We take it a little bit personal. Some mm. take it a little too personal. Um, I remember I was in a season, um, where I used to take things very personal. Um mm -hmm. guy over here, like I used to take things personal and you know, over time one thing I, I love about the organization is that it'll help you break um, break out of like old habits and you know bad yeah. bad ways of, of thinking so I used to always feel as though oh this person just trying to check me this person oh you just you know you just trying to get in my way you just did it and whole time it's like no you're actually doing this wrong and this is the correct way to do it and it took a lot of times for me to really be in my feelings um, <laughs> <laughs> to kind of yeah because I used to get in my feelings alive it took from in, in business too as a woman in business you cannot be in your you know it'll cost you I had to learn that the hard way on several occasions so yeah a lot of times somebody will give you advice or try to be accountable for you be like yo but you ain't living it right. like how you gonna tell me not to do this but you not doing it but I remember there's a there's a there's a yeah okay do as they do as they say not as, as they, they do. do like that's that's a that's like I won't say one of my favorite verses but like I like that verse a lot because in the Bible it talks about that he's like yo even though someone because I think Jesus was talking about the priests the the different priests that was in the in the synagogues and they were preaching the word but what they were preaching they was not living it so if we're talking about modern days like the pastors. Is modern day pastors or leaders, whether it's a church or whatever it may be, they even parents, they telling you one thing, but they're not doing it. Mm -hmm. And that makes us feel sometimes like, yo, I don't gotta listen to you because you're not doing it. Right. But that's such a like, I don't wanna use the word dumb, but it's a dumb way to think. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, let's just say somebody like they're a smoker and they're telling you like, yo, stop smoking, smoking not good. Mm -hmm. Just because they smoking, they still smoking. It's like, yo, you can't tell me not to smoke because you still smoking that fight. They telling you something and they express it firsthand, even though they still doing it. Right. So that's that's another thing I think like, yo, we gotta chop in order to be able to account, uh, be accountable. So I oh you know, you already said yes. Yeah. So basically, be credible. Yeah, you don't have in a sense be credible, like to tell, to give somebody advice or to hold somebody accountable. Mm -hmm. For example, if somebody could be 300 pounds and then they see you eating a cheeseburger and they're like, yo, bro, you shouldn't eat like the McDonald's and the, you can't, bro, yo, you can't tell me what to do, look at how much you weigh. Right. Good advice is good advice, yeah. no matter who it they comes from. Before you get to where they, before they, before they get to yeah. where they at. If you was wise, you know. Yo, you know what's crazy? Like, it's what you said, that sometimes the best advice come from the people, right. like, yeah. who've been through it, like, or still going through it. Mm -hmm. Cause they really know like, yo, like, yeah, like you don't want to be, trust me, you don't want to get here. Yeah, like I hear a lot of moms, like they probably had, you know, a few baby daddies and it, it's hard for them to talk to their daughters and be like, yo, why you, like, why you talking to so-and-so? Don't talk to so many guys. And like, yo, 
Yo, I'm used to different men coming inside the house. How you gonna tell me that? I've been in a situation back then, back then, when I was dating a young lady. She tore her mom that. Like, and I was in the house. She was like, yo, like, you telling me, like, stop bringing boys to the house, but I keep seeing guys coming in and out. <laughs> yeah, in front of me. <laughs> Like, I think I was in the 11th like, grade. Dang. Like, I couldn't say nothing. <laughs> but it's like, you see, that's a dumb way to think. Like, we can't, we're looking to get advice or to be uh, accounted by only people who are perfect. There's no such thing. Like, some of those people who actually been through it or made the mistakes, they're actually more credible to tell you, yo, don't do this, or to keep you accountable because they know how it feels. Right. We're humans, and sometimes different seasons will shift us. And we need the people in our lives in different areas, whether it's our spiritual life, whether it's our social life, whether it's our financial life, uh, whether it's our health. You need different people to help you stay accountable. I don't care who you are. No, like, like they're saying, no man is an island. Uh, you will not be able to do it on your own. Like I say all the time, like with this organization, excuse me, this organization would not be where it's at if we didn't have different people playing different roles and keeping each other accountable. Cause there's sometimes I need to do something, but you know, life could come, you know, life happens. So I'm gonna need the next person to be like, yo, what's up? And then not only when it comes to the organization, by the grace of God, like we make sure we keep each other accountable in what we preach. So like, if we see somebody slipping, like right now we got one dude, like uh, we went on vacation. Like even myself right now, I'm slipping on my health. But we was on vacation and everybody was on him like, yo, bro, you got tied up, the belly poking out. And he was getting tired because we went, we went to the Hollywood sign. Like, he was tired. We were like, yo, bro, come on. Like, you can't be breathing hard. The man breathing like, <laughs> like, so you see, that's accountability. And then even our character, like, sometimes, like, yo, if somebody talked to somebody in some type of way, behaving something, yo, we got to address that. Same thing with money. Like, we got big, sp oh, okay. You want to get a close up of this one? Because this one, I'm passionate about this one. We got a lot of big spenders in this organization, especially on the board. Like, you know, God has blessed us. Amen. Um, but a lot of us on the board, sometimes we wake up, we want to go buy the designer stuff. We want to buy the, and I'm like, yo, like, we got to slow it down. We're not at the mountaintop yet. So even financially, like, and sometimes you be like, yo, don't pocket watch. You see, pocket watch is for people outside your clique. But if people in your clique, like, they have the right. If you're going to call somebody friend, if you're going to call somebody like in your circle, mm -hmm. yo, it's not pocket watch, especially if they're talking for your good. Like, if I see two, three weeks, <clears throat> I'm not going to say who. <clears throat> they might be in this room. Like, you know, they have a week, they just splurging. Like, they got the whole, what they buy? What they buy? You can help me out? I, I can help you out. Dior. Oh, yeah. Um, um, I, I I don't remember. Chanel. Oh, you see, they know Chanel. Yeah. So sometimes, like, you can't be afraid to lose people because of telling them the right stuff. Now, sometimes, yo, there's some people that's very sensitive. No matter how you word it, they gonna feel some type of way. But at the end of the day, it's for their well-being. Like now, like the Bible says, correct like tone, with love. Tone. Yes, that's why I, I said correct with love. Part of correcting with love is your tone. Is the way you word it, and I can tell you that's a part a problem I had, hmm. especially with the ladies, hmm. cause I used to like, I used to just give you it straight, mm -hmm. like yo, yeah, this ugly, right if this ugly, I'll tell you like yo, if exactly. this ugly, it's I'm ugly. With it too. I ain't gonna yeah. women want you to like masquerade yeah. like, yeah. you know, this may not, be, yo, this ugly, but I'm, but I'm, I'm growing and I'm understanding like yo. Effective communication is not only communicating the way you want. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take the time to understand how you comprehend things. Mm -hmm. So if I say something to you in a way, it's if I'm really if I really want you to learn or really want you to grow, I'm gonna take the time also to learn how you take things. How you receive. Yeah, how you receive. Because mm -hmm. then if I if I find out how you receive and I say in a certain way, you'll understand it. Right. Imagine I just tell you a certain way and you just block me off. Now nothing really happened. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in a way, you're telling that person to tell something that you like need to air. No, it, it happens though. So when you are being the one who's correcting, you you have to take the responsibility of learning how the person receive. That's the thing, because there's a thing that says, um, you know, um, chew the meat, spit out the bones. I'm that type of dude. Like, yo, if you tell me something, chew the meat, just take the good, 
And if you feel offended about what I just throw out that bone, don't worry about it. But there's another to, thing you should say: take the diamond out the dirt. Yeah, take the diamond out the dirt. Yeah. But which still work? If you have that mindset, that means you'll survive anywhere. Because no matter how somebody come at you, you're gonna make it. But it's still important, this is, like I said, as someone who is delivering the correction for you to take the time. Because not everyone is there where they can just take, don't take nothing personal. Not everyone is there yet. So we have to understand that. And the main goal for telling them or correcting them is to get them to understand it, not to get them mad. So if you really want that, you gotta take a little time to get to know them. This has been another discussion with the Miss Knowles organization. We'll see you guys next time. Yeah.